Today we're traveling back to the Baltics and to the last of the three brothers, Latvia. Now let's be fair, this country does not make the headlines often, but we're about to change that, as Latvia is just packed with rich history, culture and tall women. And apparently it's the birthplace of jeans, home of the first ever Christmas tree, also the birthplace of pretty much every single fashion model in the world, and also where you can choose to spend a night in jail. Now let's not wait anymore, it's time to unravel everything about Latvia. So, first order of business, where can we find this underrated and over-interestingly country? Well, it's nestled in northeastern Europe, right in the middle of their two brothers. Estonia sits to the north, and Lithuania down south. To the east, they border both Russia and Belarus, while to the west, on the other side of the Baltic Sea, Sweden wakes back to them as a constant reminder that Latvia probably never will beat them in the game of ice hockey. You know this is funny if you like ice hockey and are not Latvian. Because ice hockey isn't about fun in Latvia, it's more of a national passion. And also, as every Swede has already forgotten about the loss in the quarterfinals at the World Cup of 2023. Latvia is a fairly small country, with about 64,000 square kilometers of landmass, which as a comparison is about half the size of the US state of Georgia. And with that size, Latvia ranks in at the 125th spot in the world in terms of area. The population number also places Latvia on the lower side of the world list. With roughly 1.9 million people, this country has about a fifth of the average US state population. And to give even more perspective to it, that's less than the population of the city of Houston, Texas. Well, as an ex-girlfriend once told me, size isn't everything. And as with most nations with a bit lower population, most of that population lives in one of a few major cities. And in Latvia's case, Riga, which is the nation's capital, is home to almost half of the entire population. The city sits on the coast of the Gulf of Riga and is around 300 square kilometers in size. And it's a beautiful place, with a lot of old buildings still remaining. In fact, Riga's old town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which basically means that it's a place of outstanding universal value. And the city was also named the European Capital of Culture back in 2014. The country's second largest city, Daugavpils, holds roughly 100,000 people and that city does also hold distinct imprints of Latvia's vibrant history, with its medieval castles and Soviet-era architecture. The third and fourth largest cities are Lijepaja and Jelgava, home to about 80,000 and 60,000 people respectively. In terms of landscape, Latvia is pretty similar to the other Baltic nations, a flat country with the highest point reaching just 312 meters. However, it's a beautiful country, with lush forests, over 3,000 lakes and 12,000 rivers. The longest and most famous one, the Daugava River, stretches over 1,000 kilometers and travels from Russia through Belarus and then empties into the Gulf of Riga. And that the capital sits on the banks of this river is no coincidence, as it has played a big part in the country's history, and made Riga a real trading center between different civilizations. So besides the capital having a central role in the past, how did history form Latvia into the country we see today? The area was first home to tribes, who are the forefathers to modern Latvians. These tribes had their own cultures, languages and pagan religions, lived mainly from agriculture but also engaged in trade and warfare. Around the same time, Europe as a continent was undergoing a period known as the Crusades, where Christian forces were sent to retake holy lands and spread Christianity. And in the early 13th century, one of these Crusades was directed into the Baltic region including modern-day Latvia, known as the Northern Crusades. The people leading these crusades were the Germanic Teutonic Knights, Christian Knights from Germany. In the 1500s, a major conflict, who got the name the Livonian War, went down between a bunch of countries. Denmark, Sweden, Russia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth were all involved. And the battle was about taking control of the strategic area where present-day Latvia and Estonia is. The land eventually split between the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and Sweden, with the Poles controlling Riga. Then, during the Polish-Swedish War in the start of the 1600s, the city of Riga came under Sweden's control, as they expanded their territory, aiming to be a major power in Europe. Riga, who was one of the largest and most prosperous cities in the entire region, so the capture of it was a significant military achievement. In the 1700s, another major war happened the Great Northern War, fought between the alliance led by Russia against Sweden. The Russians eventually won that war, leading to Latvia being incorporated into the Russian Empire. And this is an important part in history, as it marked the start of the Russian control over Latvia, which, with a brief period of independence from 1918 to 1940, lasted until the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. 
And that particular year, 1918, is a great meaning to Latvia, as on November 18th of that year, they declared independence from Russia, after years of the people starting to take pride of their unique culture and identity, a period known as the National Awakening. In 1920, Soviets signed the Treaty of Riga, a peace treaty that recognized Latvia as its own country. However, it didn't take long for them to break that promise. Since in 1939, Soviets signed a secret deal with Germany that decided that Latvia should be part of Soviet and forced them to join in the following year. During World War II, Germany took control of Latvia, but only for a couple of years, as the Red Army, the army of the Soviet Union, later kicked the Germans out and made Latvia part of the Soviet once again. In 1987, Latvia together with Estonia and Lithuania joined together in the Singing Revolution against Soviet. And in 1991, Soviet agreed that Latvia was its own country. In 1993, Latvia had its first election, where people could vote for their leaders after leaving the Soviet Union. And they also made new rules for its country, a constitution. In 2004, Latvia joined both NATO and the European Union. And in 2014, they started using the euro as its currency. Today, Latvia is a democratic republic and a high-income advanced economy with its GDP per capita rapidly catching up to Western standards. However, Latvia finds itself on the forefront of European geopolitics due to its shared border with Russia. As a result, it is an active player in the ongoing dialogue about European security and international relations. Although, it looks like Latvia also liked to play a bit with its Soviet past. At least if you're visiting the Karosta prison in Lipaya. This prison, built in 1905, still remains in its original form and has been transformed into a hotel if that's the right word to use, I'm not sure here. Here you can get the full Soviet prisoner experience, which involves verbal abuse, physical punishment, and a whole bunch of other stuff from actors hired to act as prison guards. But if being threatened and yelled at while sleeping on the concrete floor isn't your cup of tea, just go to Riga instead. Wander through the streets, just enjoying the city. Then stop at the Riga Central Market, one of Europe's largest and gastronomic paradises. I'm pretty sure you find some rye bread here, as well, let's just say Latvians don't hate rye bread, okay? And yes, there will be potatoes as well. But on a more serious note, the Latvian kitchen has strong influences from its Baltic and Slavic neighbors, with various soups, meats and sausages. Then there's this stuff, the national drink of Latvia, the Riga Black Balsam, a potent herbal liquor. But leaving the food market and heading out in nature, both Gauja and Kemeri National Parks offer some amazing sights. Then there's the Ventas Rumba, a spectacular waterfall that's actually the widest in Europe with its around 100 meters in width and just 2 meters in height. But the waterfall can actually reach about twice that width during floods. And if you're looking for beaches, check out the city of Jurmala, which offers some pretty stunning ones and a vibrant nightlife as well. But while you're out seeing all these places, don't be afraid if you come across a giant supermodel, because, you know, you will. You see, first of all, Latvia has one of the highest proportions of women and two men in the world, meaning there are more ladies than gentlemen. They also have the tallest women in Europe, with the average sitting at 170 centimeters, or 5'7". How many of you watching are taller than this? So a lot of girls, they're tall, Maybe there's not a big of a surprise that you find more high fashion models in Latvia than in most other countries on earth when looking per capita. Now here's something you probably didn't expect to read. Jeans were invented here. At least sort of. A Riga-born man named Jacob W. Davis, who moved to Reno, Nevada in 1854, created the first ever pair of jeans. He later approached a guy named Levi Strauss, sounds familiar, which was his fabric supplier for financial backing. And yeah, I think we all know how Levi's done after that. So pretty remarkable stuff happening in this country. Didn't I say we were going to put Latvia in the headlines? Oh, and by the way, you know this thing called Christmas tree? Latvians claim that the first ever decorated Christmas tree in public happened in Latvia in the year 1510, in Riga. What do you think about this one? And lastly, let's not forget about the flag. The Latvian flag is one of the oldest in the world, with a history that could date back to the 13th century. Its carmine red and white stripes symbolizes the Latvian people's willingness to fight for their freedom. One legend even suggests that the flag's design was inspired by a wounded Latvian leader wrapped in a white sheet. The sheet was stained by his blood, but remained white in the center. The blood-stained cloth was then used as a flag in battle, where the soldiers emerged as winners. So you started watching this thinking, what is Latvia? Where is this place on the map? And what can they even do except playing ice hockey? And now you finish the video learning that they can't play ice hockey, and that the country is just an amazing place with so much history, culture, and interesting places to see. If you haven't been to Latvia yet, I definitely recommend you to go there. I know I had a great time when I visited. 
But now, I want you to visit another place on Earth by clicking one of the videos on your screen right now.